This is Chuck Schaefer of HCM TV, and I am joined by Josh Burson, CEO and President of Burson and Associates. Josh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Chuck. It's nice to be here. Josh, we are hearing that this year the HR technology industry is being described as a point of inflection. Mm -hmm. What do you think the drivers are and factors are that are giving it that description? That's a good question. There's three or four big trends that have had a tremendous impact on HR technology. One is, of course, the cloud, that you can now develop software in months and sell it almost very, very, very quickly. So there's many, many innovative uh, tools available on the internet, and buyers can sign up for them and implement them without buying software, without going through IT. So the rate of change is very high. The second is integration. Uh, we reached a phase in the HR software world where companies have far too many systems. Uh, thir more than 30% of the organizations we recently surveyed told us they would be willing to sacrifice technical features for a more integrated solution. So what they're basically saying is less um, fancy stuff, more single vendor solutions. So that's affected the market a lot. So a lot of companies have been acquired and a lot of the vendors have um, become bigger. Um, and then the third is mobile and social. Um, everybody, I was just in a mobile panel um, earlier this morning. We had about, must have 100 people in there. I asked them, what, you know, how many of you feel you have a mobile strategy in place for HR technology? Maybe 10% raised their hand. How many of you are getting pressure for mobile solutions? They all raised their hand. So the vendor technology, the vendors and the you know, the rapid adoption of mobile phones and, and devices is really transforming this industry too. So there's a lot of things going on that are making it, you know, very, very exciting. You know, let me drill down, if I could, on a, a couple of those disruptive technologies that are bringing change. How do you see social media, or maybe mobility, adding value to what has been historically HCM software technology? Well, there's a, there's a couple of answers to that question, Chuck. One is that in order for organizations to succeed today, the management structures themselves have to be more dynamic. So HR's role is shifting from one of compliance and administration to one of facilitating and improving communication. So HR itself as a function has to really define where it spends its time because of the way organizations operate. The second is that the, in almost every function of HR, social um, interactions are starting to replace the traditional approaches. So um, who should I promote? Should the manager make that decision or should the employees as a whole make that decision? Who should get a raise? Who should get a performance appraisal? Um, who should we hire? Social information is now extremely valuable in all of these people-related decisions that used to be made either by HR or by management. You know, you brought up an interesting quandary just a moment ago where you noted that virtually all HCM and HR managers are getting pressure to adopt social technologies, but very few have social strategies. What advice would you give to the HCM or HR business leader in order to create or append their HR strategy with social? Well, probably two or three things really rethink the practices that you're already using. Um, most of the things that we do in HR are based on methodologies from the turn of the century. The way performance appraisals are done, the way compensation decisions are made, the way succession management works. These are all things that started in very hierarchical traditional organizations. Your organization doesn't work like that anymore, so it's okay to think differently about to how people decisions are made. And the third is, don't try to buy a whole bunch of new technology that is just for HR. Uh, social networking, internal social collaboration is probably already going on in your company. You've already got systems, you've already got tools. It's nice that all the HR vendors have tools as well, but if your company already has a SharePoint system or a Yammer system or a Jive system or whatever it may be, use that and you'll find a huge body of experience in the company already of adoption of these kinds of technologies. One of the problems with HR technology is HR professionals get very excited about it and they buy it and then nobody uses it. So go where the action is, you know, use the tools that might already exist. 
You know, let me talk about another technology where I think there's some excitement and business leaders are buying it, and that's uh, talent assessment and talent management applications. These systems have been around for a lot of years, but just in the last couple years, they've seen a lot of new interest and new adoption. Why now? Why is, why are the, why is the adoption rate going so much more quickly for talent management today? Well, for two reasons. One is the software is much more integrated and more powerful than it used to be, but I think the bigger issue is, frankly, companies are suffering from talent shortages. And, and the, the, the economy that we live in is one of what we call a talent paradox. We have companies with job openings, we have a high unemployment rate, and the matches are not taking place. Because the jobs that are available are either in highly skilled roles, or they're in countries or locations where there aren't skills, so the organization that can better train and move, develop, and attract people is going to beat the organization that can't. So the concepts and strategies of talent are CEO level issues. So when it does boil down to HR, the HR professionals now have the mandate to go out and buy some great technology to help them. Now the technology itself doesn't solve all those problems. You still have to really implement it and use it in a, in a strategic way. but. Talent management used to be you know, automation of paper practices, which frankly wasn't very strategic. Now it really has strategic uh, mandate in organizations, so um, it's, just the, it's just a very important thing to do. What advice would you offer to the HCM or business leader that's about to evaluate talent management systems? Well, I think there, I, I'll tell you what not to do. Don't get led down the path of what we call HR catnip, which is, ooh, here's a feature that's really neat, and I think it would be cool if we had it. All of the tools have some of that stuff. But what you find, and what we find in most of these um, implementations is, first, you have to know what problems you're going to solve in your company in one, what order. So it may be very nice to buy an end-to-end -end system that has eight or nine different modules, but today, the most critical issue might be your learning management system. So find a vendor whose product roadmap is um, maturing or mature at the stage you are in your implementation. The second thing is um, there's a lot of vendors, and they tend to specialize by company size, complexity, and industry. So if you're a gigantic pharmaceutical company with a global workforce with many, many different business units, there's a set of vendors that are appropriate for you. If you're a small uh, consulting firm with you know, 1,000 employees, there's another set of vendors that are appropriate for you. So just because one company has a big brand and might do a lot of marketing doesn't mean it's necessarily the right company for you. Josh, for my last question, if we look ahead a few years, how do you suspect the HCM technology industry is going to change or evolve? Well, I think there'll be um, much, much more integrated solutions, so there'll be um, the standard um, functions of talent management will be common across all, it's, it's sort of like what happened to financial software. I would imagine there was a day when you bought accounts payable systems separate from accounts receivable systems, separate from accounting systems, now they're all together. There was a day when you bought um, Salesforce automation and marketing automation, now it's called CRM. So, so the same things happen here. All of these things are being integrated together into HCM and I think most of the vendors will have very common functionality. That's number one. Um, number two, these will become very data-centric applications. So what's happened in companies that have implemented this now for three, four, five years is they've now captured um, millions and millions of rows of data about employees. They know the behavior of high performers versus low performers. They know patterns of mobility. They know pa patterns of success, patterns of, patterns of failure. And the talent management or HR systems are going to be one of the most critical tools that you'll have for understanding the um, pockets of sub-optimization and poor performance and then improving that. Today, most companies haven't quite figured that out yet because the systems are still not integrated and they haven't been in use. Well, with that insight, I think we're at a good break point to conclude our conversation. This is Chuck Schaefer. I've been joined by Josh Burson. Josh, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Chuck.